Always love the truck coming up. Thanks for staying up late to check out another edition of Football Friday. We are packed once again. Our Lawrence Gilligan set up shop at Wilson Stadium for our game of the week. Another power poll is also ready. And where is your team? Did they finish well in the poll? And we also have the Battle of the Brothers Ocampo. No doubt, that's an air show. The Trisco Heritage Jaguars trying to get their first District 5A victory against Rio Grande, the Ravens, and of course the Raven. Ravens got Jaguar on the menu because in the first quarter, Rio Grande's punt doesn't go well, bounces bad, and then we see Alvarez there to pick it up, and Alvarez gets a block here and there, turns it upfield, one man to beat, touchdown, eight to nothing after a successful two-point conversion into the end zone. Atrisco trying to make it look easy. Next drive, Rio Grande's Pablo Duarte under center is taking a snap, gives it to Patrick Lucero, takes it up the middle, gets planted. Better on the Next, Atrisco Heritage possession. Nathaniel Good dropping back, setting up, can't find anybody, pulls it down, runs to his right before he's forced out by Rio's Leonson Rodriguez. Jaguars driving, and Good takes a snap, fakes a dive. Where is he? Where is he? There he is on his way to the end zone for a touchdown, Jags. Next, Raven possession. Give up the middle to the big man, Jalen Ned, but after a three and out, the Ravens would punt it. Jaguars with the ball. Good with the toss to Alvarez, who turns up the field. He gets blockers. He's asked blockers, but Ravens, Mateus Science is there to greet him and says, not this time. Then good with the give to Alvarez, strolling into the end zone. Atrisco Heritage putting up point after point. Next, Ravens possession. Duarte rolling right, drops it off to Patrick Lucero, who takes a big hit by Julio Capillo. Ravens in business and driving. Duarte fires downfield, finds Dustin Lamar, who snatches it out of the air. He's got room, breaking a tackle. Finally brought down Jaguar territory. Then Duarte with the bad pitch and a huge loss. It would be that kind of day for the Ravens as Atrisco would win this one. 44 to nothing. That should be 44 to nothing. Only two teams operating in District 3-5-8 tonight. Gaston at Onyate. They're all running out on the field, and Coach Ray Girella looking happy because this team is going to do something early. He's liking what he sees, especially when his team gets the ball and it's not the offensive side, it's the defensive side. Curtis Hines back to pass for Onyate. Picked. And Gadsden is in business after the interception. And when they have the ball, they give it to this guy. Isaac Montes gets the Gadsden touchdown, making it 7-0. Onyate would answer. Isaiah Felder gets the rock. <coughs> makes me cough. Does the work for the score. Onyate sidelines, smiling. And then Aaron Gomez going back to pass for Gadsden. Marshall McCorkle, I'll take that. The pick for the other team, Onyate, doesn't manage to do anything with that afterwards, though. So Gaston back with the ball. Gomez to Joaquin Barrio sets up a touchdown. It would be Isaac Montez with the hard fought touchdown. Gaston wins it 31 to 24. Our game of the week is settled between cavemen and bears. Sounds like a script from a wilderness movie. That's why we sent Lawrence Gilligan. <laughs> Lawrence, I'm always picking on you. He's here to tell us all about it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's a 2012 version of The Wizard of Oz. Cavemen, <laughs> Homecoming, and the uh, Bears. Oh my. All right, so go out, lots of attention tonight. Play hard, do your best. Everything revolves around this. So seniors, this is your last chance. That's right, Coach Lucero reminding the seniors how memorable a win on homecoming is as it's homecoming for La Cueva. Zach Silva and the Bears ready to go in this one against the Cavemen of Carlsbad. First quarter, La Cueva strikes first. It's Silva to Michael Rose and it's Rose with the reverse toss to Jarek Sharp. All seniors involved in this play. That puts the Bears in business. A couple of plays oh, later, it's Silva. To Rose in the flat on the far side, and Mr. Rose makes it look oh so easy. Getting in for the touchdown just like that. It's 7 0 for Cueva. That was the quarterback Silva telling the O line, good job blocking. They did a great job on this drive, too. Silva going up top to Chris Thompson, who makes a sensational stab for a good gain. That leads to this big 1 1. Nathan Burgett getting in for the score just like that. It's 14 0 Bears. 
The Bears defense playing solid D in this one, getting the ball back for LC. Check this play out. It's Silva going across the field. Big no-no, but it pays off. It's Sharp making a fantastic grab, and he's gone. Nobody's going to catch the speedster for six. Cueva leads 21-0 until the cavemen decide to wake up to hunt. Quarterback Rodney Holcomb throwing a dart to Kane Fierro. Fierro dodging two tackles, getting Carlsbad on the board. It's 21-7 on the ensuing Bears drive. Carlsbad forces Silva's pass to be a little ahead, and it's okay for Derek Bryson, who is there for the interception. Looks like maybe momentum is shifting back to the Cavemen's way until this. Holcomb trying to complete the screen pass. Instead, it's going the other way for six. Marcial Garcia is there with the early Christmas present. La Cueva wins their homecoming, beating Carlsbad 41-21. You know, we throw the interception, and they're in good field position. They're getting in the green zone, and, and we pick it off and, and maintain that 21-point lead, so it was a huge play for us. Now you got, you know, Kimo's a pretty good lead, but how do those penalties hurt? They hurt us, without a doubt. You know, they stop uh, our ability to advance the ball, and we just need to talk to our players about being calm and try to alleviate those penalties. Yeah, there were a lot of personal fouls called in that game, but La Cueva prevails by 20. But hey, here's a look at this week's Spirit Stick. At least Carlsbad wins something, right? They had over 400 votes for the win. Here's how they decorated it. All right, well, that's your look at the game of the week and a look at your Spirit Stick winner. But how about some more football highlights, huh, Van? What do you say? All right, that sounds good to me because it's a family affair in Socorro tonight. The brothers Ocampo coaching against one another. Centennial's coach Aaron Ocampo bringing his first-year Hawks to see brother Damian and the Warriors. Where else would you rather be? Where else would you rather be? Get ready to play a game with your brothers. So let's enjoy that. Let's enjoy it through the intangibles. Aaron Ocampo saying, I got to beat my little brother. Damien, his team, will they respond? Hawks quarterback, Quevin Redding in the shotgun, stepping out in the pocket, looking up and hooking up with Tom Richards before being brought down to drive with in. Then the Warriors decide they want to score. Damien Ocampo looking on, Tyler Christine rolling out, throwing on the run, Adam Paz bringing the ball in. He would be caught, uh, no, six nothing, Socorro. Fans liking that, hey, hey, big time. Hey, hey, Second quarter, Hawks third down in the red zone. Redding drops back, throwing to the coverage, and Jonah got Agles is there to haul it in. Seven to six, Hawks, and this game was close, but his big brother prevailing, winning it, and Centennial gets the victory, 28 to 21. Timeout is called, more football Friday is on the way. The Berlin Eagles and Gallup Bengals tangle in Valencia County, in fact, we stay in V County, where they have three teams for the shot at winning district. We'll sort it all out when we come back. First, check out our cheerleaders of the week.